Mina, Konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. I'm off center. That's better. This is Joshua chapter 6 that I read today, and normally I'd be talking about, or you would think I would be talking about, the great victory that God gives to his people, how Joshua and the Israelites marched around Jericho seven times, all collapsed, and boom, they invaded, wiped out everyone, victory was theirs, and they're in good shape. Not my point tonight. My point tonight is something a little bit off the beaten path. And I like to be a little bit off the beaten path because, let's face it, even though the Bible's awesome and every story is great, some stories we've heard a hundred times. And I don't apologize for saying that. We need something new every now and then, so I'm going to focus on something a little bit different. Joshua, still chapter 6, going down and starting at verse 20. So the people shouted when the priests blew the trumpets, and it happened when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout, that the wall fell down flat. Then the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. So the wall falls down flat after the people shout. Boom! Walls down. That's it. Invasion. Ho! Let's go back to Joshua chapter 2, verse 15. We were talking about Rahab a few days ago and how Rahab was supposed to be spared, how she's supposed to live. And sure enough, um, going back to chapter 6 for just a second, verse 22, But Joshua had said to the two men who had spied out the country, Go into the harlot's house, and from there bring out the woman and all that she has, as you swore to her. And the young men who had been spies went in and brought out Rahab, her father, her mother, her brothers, and all that she had. So they brought out all her relatives and left them outside the camp of Israel. Boom, they're safe, they're alive. So they kept their word. And if they hadn't, it would be really hard for Rahab to be in the genealogy of Jesus. But in Joshua chapter 2, verse 15, we read, Then she, that's Rahab, let them down by a rope through the window, for her house was on the city wall. She dwelt on the wall, and she was in her house. I just read it. They were in her house. Not her father's house, not her mother's house, her house. So when the wall collapsed, and I honestly never really saw it until just today, obviously not the whole wall collapsed. I've heard several times from several preachers that when you read all, or everything in the Bible, all means all. Everything means everything. There's no exception to that. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. Rahab could not have lived if the entire wall had just come down then her house would have collapsed, and she and her family would have died. Part of that wall was left standing because God honored his word. Or I guess I could say God honored the Israelites' word. God himself spared her when he collapsed the walls of Jericho. So when you read all or everything in the Bible, it doesn't necessarily mean absolutely everything to the last bit of whatever it is they're talking about and can be used as a more generic phrase kind of like i may say i always go to bed late well when i had an endoscopy a few days ago i wasn't in bed late i uh i went to bed pretty darn early because i didn't have a choice because the endoscopy was really early in the morning like all medical procedures are i'm fine by the way but that doesn't change the fact that pretty much every other night i go to bed very, very, very late, usually 3 or 4 in the morning. I'm trying to change that very unsuccessfully. But just like in real life, we use phrases where all and everything doesn't mean literally every single time. Same thing in the Bible. You read all, you read everything. It doesn't mean every single time. This being a very good, prominent example. So, food for thought. If you have the time and the desire, leave, leave some thoughts in the comments. Let, you, let me know what you think about this. Let me know what you've heard from your church. I love you guys very much. God bless.